across the globe in tropical rainforests, grasslands and mountains lives one of Earth's most ancient and remarkable animals. The tapir has a lineage stretching back over 55 million years. Today, four species still live across Central and South America and in Southeast Asia. However, all are threatened with extinction. Habitat loss, poaching, roadkill and other factors are pushing this ancient animal to the brink. In 2015, researchers collaborating on projects across five countries, three continents and in separate organizations teamed together to reverse this trend. Sponsored by the Fondation Segre and working under the International Union of Conservation of Nature's Tapir Specialist Group, this dedicated team of conservationists are battling against the odds to preserve this unique animal for generations to come. By using their collective knowledge and experience, they stand the best chance of success. This is a story of how they are doing it. In Brazil, scientists from the Institute of Ecological Research, working on the Lowland Tapir Conservation Initiative, are focusing efforts on one of Brazil's most threatened biomes, the Cerrado. Here, poaching, habitat loss, collisions with vehicles and pesticide contamination all pose a threat to the resident populations of lowland tapirs. To truly understand the scale of the threats, the researchers fitted GPS collars to 23 tapirs to track their movements and assess their health. They monitored highways to assess tapir roadkill. They also deployed remote camera traps in underpasses along highways to assess whether tapirs were using them and successfully crossing these roads. Samples were taken from tapirs both alive and dead to find out how potentially harmful pesticides are affecting the animals. From their combined data, researchers are identifying hotspot regions where tapirs are most in danger of getting hit by vehicles and killed. They are presenting the state government with mitigation plans to prevent more tapirs from dying on the roads. Over six years, almost 500 tapirs have died on 34 highways in the state of Mato Grosso do Sul, with 27 people killed in the collisions as well. They recommend fencing alongside roads to funnel tapirs into using the underpasses. Following a successful campaign, over 5,000 people have signed a petition for the government to urgently adopt mitigation plans. They have also found that pesticides are present at alarming concentrations in tapirs, which may be impacting their ability to survive and reproduce. This is urgently being investigated further and practices may be sought. Through a combination of outreach to farmers, schools and communities, threat mitigation plans and petitions to civil society, these scientists are doing all they can to preserve the lowland tapir in its grassland home. In Nicaragua, the overwhelming majority of remaining habitat for the endangered Baird's tapir lies in the country's autonomous regions, largely titled to indigenous and Afro-descendant communities. Conservationists from the Nicaragua Tapir Project are working closely with indigenous communities to preserve Baird's tapir in one of its last refuges in the country, the Indio Maiz Biological Reserve. They are also working closely with regional authorities and universities to help them develop the tools they need to protect their natural resources. The main threat to tapirs in these autonomous regions is illegal encroachment by non-indigenous cattle ranchers. As they deforest lands, these illegal colonists also shoot tapirs in retaliation for tapirs feeding on crops in farms surrounding their habitat. To combat these threats, team helped fund an indigenous forest ranger program. This employs members of the Rama and Creole community to patrol the reserve and construct ranger stations. They are also working with their indigenous allies and other local and international partners to construct a field station and engaging with farmers to design strategies to help deter tapirs from raiding crops. As in Brazil, researchers here are also using GPS collars to understand the movements and threats posed to the tapirs. To date, nine tapirs have been collared. Using their results, the Nicaragua tapir team developed a regional tapir conservation action plan 
in an attempt to replicate their successful efforts to empower local communities to protect their lands. They have combined this with extensive capacity building, including a course with Caribbean Coast students and professors. Nicaragua's recent past has been complicated by natural disasters, such as 2016's Hurricane Otto, and a lack of central government commitment to stopping deforestation in protected areas. Conservation in Nicaragua can only work by empowering indigenous and Afro-descendant autonomous governments. High in the grasslands and montane forests of Colombia, researchers from the civil university Eloy Alfaro of Manabí are hoping to shine a light on one of the least known and most threatened tapir species, the mountain tapir. Despite probably having the largest population of mountain tapirs in the world, very little is known about them in Colombia, partly due to years of paramilitary activity in the region that made it inaccessible. Now, with access once more restored, researchers need to find out the distribution and population size of tapirs, what threats they face, and how they can be overcome. Hiking far up into the mountains, the team have deployed cameras in three protected areas in the Andes, revealing new insights into this little-known population of tapirs. Cameras have confirmed the presence of tapirs in many of the places sampled, though in others they are absent. The team are now expanding their research and have formed important links with other organizations and institutions. In a promising development, they have used their new knowledge to support the creation of a brand new protected area, Los Gaupes Regional Park, partnering with former FARC guerrillas to support this development. The Maya Biosphere Reserve in the north of Guatemala is part of the largest rainforest north of the Amazon. Here, researchers are focusing efforts to protect Baird's tapir in two of the remaining populations in the country. A combination of land pressure, cattle ranching and a lack of diverse livelihoods is resulting in encroachment into the forest and more poaching of tapirs. Researchers working for the Center of Conservation Studies and Defenders of Nature are working to ascertain the status of tapirs here. They are doing this by developing and implementing a standardized monitoring protocol for the reserve. Sadly, as well as evidence of tapirs, they are also documenting logging, hunting and natural resource extraction. In response, they are coordinating with the Protected Areas National Council, the Army and National Police to patrol the forest and guard against these threats. In addition, they are engaging local people in the conservation of the forest and its tapirs. By training over 30 tourism guides from local communities in biological topics, they are strengthening their capacities to develop alternative livelihoods that depend on both the tapir and the forest. Since Baird's tapir shares its home with over 70% of other vertebrate species in Guatemala, the team aimed to use it as a facilitator to improve spatial planning of Guatemala's protected areas system. As such, a draft document for a national strategy for tapir conservation was developed with other organizations, with the aim that it becomes an official document that will guide conservation efforts. On the opposite side of the globe lives the only species of tapir to live in Asia the strikingly patterned Malayan tapir. Deep in the island of Sumatra, researchers from Andalus University and Copenhagen Zoo face an enormous challenge, the conversion of massive stretches of rainforest into palm oil plantations. As such, forest sheltering tapirs is being fragmented into islands surrounded by oil palm. To ensure tapirs can persist, the team are working around Karunchi Sablat National Park to ensure pockets of habitat outside the park are linked by corridors of forest to allow tapirs to move between them. To assess the ability of tapirs moving between these patches of forest, the researchers have been setting cameras in over 50 locations. Though they have found tapirs alongside plantations, not a single image was captured of a tapir crossing into an oil palm plantation or in forest fragments surrounded by oil palm. With this information, it is now imperative that forest is protected to enable tapirs to move safely through the landscape. Importantly, 
the team has been able to engage with the plantation management company as well as the Ministry of Forestry to propose a wildlife corridor. So far, the plan has been accepted. The team are also hoping to track a tapir's movements with a GPS collar. This will provide invaluable information to understand how tapirs navigate their landscape. Finally, a partnership between a plantation company and Karinchi Sablats National Park promises to facilitate more effective patrolling of the area against poachers that could threaten tapirs within the park. Since 2015, this alliance of conservationists from separate organisations has been using their collective experience, drawing upon 130 members of the Tapir Specialist Group in 28 countries to develop these five programmes and replicate this model. In most programmes, students studying in Masters and Bachelors programmes have been integrated into the heart of the research, building a sustainable future for science-led Tapir conservation. The programmes are reaching out to wider communities through film, publications, TV, news channels and media outlets. Through a combination of research, action and training, these projects are working to ensure that the tapir, which has persisted on Earth for so long and is integral to both ecosystems and people's lives, continues to survive for generations to come. To learn more about these programmes, to follow updates and to support the teams, please visit worldtapirconservation.org.